Okay, thanks. Welcome back. I think we're together now. We have the unit assembled in its operating mode, and uh, we've got some displays going here. Let me go ahead and uh, zero that out. That's its pre-zero state. When uh, the unit begins to turn, there will be pulses going to this counter, and it will count one count per revolution. Uh, this oscilloscope here is watching uh, sensors 3 and f a signal from 4. Uh, and uh, what this is doing is displaying a vibration trace that allows uh, diagnostics of uh, pretty uh, intimate character. And it's quite sensitive to vibration. Uh, you can see a little bit of vibration right now. That's actually because the drive motor is running. And if I uh, give the base of the unit a little bit of uh, that, you can see that the vibration sensor is very sensitive. And with this I can pick up uh, rumbles, bearing rumbles, acoustic uh, resonances on the disc. Uh, I can even tell the difference between um, a drive that would be a gear drive and a drive that's a pulley or belt kind of drive. Um, it's easy to tell the difference between a driven and an undriven uh, rotor using this kind of vibration uh, sensing. <clears throat> okay, uh, and this oscilloscope is the timing trace, uh, so we'll be displaying pulses from sensors 1 and 2 and then using the difference between those sensors <clears throat> to see a real-time display of the approximate RPM. <clears throat> okay, so uh, sensor 1 is this a uh, non-powered coil <clears throat> that's uh, watching the edge of the disc and there's a magnet in the edge of the disc that uh, causes a current pulse in that coil. And uh, halfway around the disc is uh, sensor number two and that's a little Hall effect. I'm sorry about the light. That's a little Hall effect sensor right there. A ratiometric Hall effect sensor that uh, has traceable calibration. <clears throat> and it's providing a second pulse for timing and it's also providing the trigger pulse for this counter. Okay. Then we have uh, sensor number five, which is another ratiometric Hall effect sensor. It is not being used uh, right now. And what else have we got? Oh yeah, number three, of course, is the vibration sensor. And uh, there's the little uh, power takeoff generator with the Jewel Thief uh, circuit if we want to take some power off. Okay. Uh, rotor magnets are 35 grams, magnet and keeper is 55 grams uh, with the mount. 18 of those, that's 990 grams of uh, magnets and rotors, or uh, keepers, at the 16-inch uh, radius, <coughs> or diameter, okay? So, like I said, the drive motor is already running, and because of the arrangement with that tape and the, the uh, one-way clutch, one-way bearing, I can position the wheel wherever I want without engaging the motor yet, right? But as soon as I go past a certain point, the motor, the wheel uh, contacts that tape. You can hear it, it sounds like a snort, eh? and it uh, gives the wheel about a third of a turn of a pulse. Okay, and so the wheel is accelerating. If you didn't know that motor was there, and the keepers weren't on the magnets, you might think you were watching an actual magnet motor going. Right? But there are several clues, of course I've shown you the motor, but if you look at the vibration trace, okay, you can see several things. You can see what, uh, the bearing rumbles, from the sideways load, you can see the skipping and chattering of the one-way bearing, and you can see the major contact points uh, as the wheel hits that little piece of tape and pushes the rotor along. Now we're uh, counting revolutions there. That should be sufficient to show you that there's no splice in the movie. Okay, and the wheel's accelerating. Are we starting to see timing pulses yet? Not quite. It's still not going fast enough to show up uh, on our little scale here. So we'll just watch it.
watch it grow. Now with this configuration, if I turn the motor off, that is, uh, remove the power, I don't even have to rotate the motor mount away from the wheel. Uh, it'll often simply uh, just coast along with very little friction from the motor and from that one-way bearing. Okay, now we're just starting to see a signal from that second sensor coming in right there. Okay, so the first sensor is firing the trigger pulse, which is at the beginning of my scale here. The uh, uh, horizontal divisions are 50 milliseconds per centimeter, and uh, this second pulse from the number one sensor here is moving slowly, so we've just passed. 75 RPM and we're increasing and I've checked that by the way of course I've checked it by using the stopwatch against the counter the revolution counter okay and uh, it's ballpark we're uh, we're within three or four percent uh, uh, of the two methods there so uh, the oscilloscope used in this manner uh, gives us a real-time display of RPM and you can very quickly see accelerations and decelerations um, by monitoring the position of that pulse. Okay, so this is the pulse that's coming from the coil and this top trace which is triggering the scan is the pulse that's coming from the uh, ratiometric Hall effect sensor on the other side of the disk. So this spacing between the trigger and this peak represents half of one rotation. So we're approaching 100 RPM right now. And I know with this arrangement that uh, we'll top out at about 170 RPM. Uh, curiously, that's just what Milo reported, 170 RPM. Isn't that interesting? And I can confirm that the stator temperature does in fact drop. Uh, when I started this series of experiments uh, about an hour ago, the stator was at 22, almost 23 degrees. Now it's at 19 degrees. And the room temperature has remained constant uh, at 64 degrees during that whole time. 64 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, of course. And this, of course, is centigrade. So we can confirm that the stator does cool off. And I can feel a lot of air movement. You know, these magnets and all that stuff is blowing the air around. All the magnets have their keepers on. Okay, so we're up to about 110 RPM now, still accelerating. Okay. And uh, this disc on these bearings, this four kilogram disc on these bearings with the keepers on all the magnets will take over eight minutes to come to a stop from 170 RPM. Now, over eight minutes. Okay. So that's with no possible power and as little drag as possible. So don't be fooled by long rundown times from speeds like 170 RPM. The people that say two minutes are simply underestimating because a heavy disc on good bearings can spin a long time. And I wouldn't even call these bearings of mine really good. These are j I just pulled these out of the drawer. Okay, uh, where are we at here? We're about out of time on this one. We're about 120 RPM and still accelerating. Thanks again for watching.